By day, Robin's neighborhood seems peaceful. That's clear. One eight G four nine. But spend the night watching the show just around the corner, like we did, and you may understand why homeowners have had it. Things are terrible. They're drug addicts. There, prostitution. I've even seen drug deals going down. Linda Chambers thought she was moving to her retirement home. Well, her car has been stolen twice, and now she's too afraid to walk to her mailbox. This is your bedroom, but you don't sleep here, right? Where do you sleep now? In my bathtub, right here. That's ridiculous. And I put my head on this end so the water won't get me on that end. I put my feet, yes, I slept like that. And I slept like that many nights because you'll come home, and you'll be laying in your bed. I'll be laying in my bed reading my Bible or reading a book or whatever. Next thing I know, pow, 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 boom, on the floor I go, and I'm crawling in here. Why not pack up and move? I found this place that had everything I wanted. And it's not fair that I should have to leave my home because somebody else is doing something wrong. That's not right to me. And you can't keep running. We have to take back our neighborhood. I don't want to move. I want to live there. Take back the neighborhood. You're probably saying, I've heard that before. But Robin Stackhouse, Linda Chambers, and 450 other homeowners aren't just talking. They're fighting and winning. We would like for everyone in the community to band together and to get rid of the drug dealers, the prostitutes. That's our goal. They're getting there brick by brick, as the homeowners call it. The first brick, the village on the green apartment complex. Once a nice place to live, until the drug dealers and prostitutes took over. I kept this here, said I wanted to have to meet my wife at the door. I had a gun ready. George and Evelyn Cordemange can tell you about living directly behind the village on the green apartments. I thought we were in trouble. And how they tried to deal with it. My husband bought me just to carry around. I've mowed the yard with this one in my pocket. And I carry it with me. It's a little 25. Can make a little hole. Evelyn doesn't carry that 25 anymore because the complex, which four months ago looked like this, is now history. How did homeowners do it? They listened to the advice of a cop. He told Robin Stackhouse. Well, there's not much we can do. You ought to sue. Um, the police have told you that. Oh, not yes. Not much we can do. You ought to sue. And sue they did. Not the drug dealers, not the prostitutes, huh. but the owners of Village That's on the Green, easy. saying they were responsible That's for huh. crime at the complex. In an unusual out-of-court settlement, the owners gave Robin and her partners almost two and a half million dollars and sold them the complex for just $275, less than a month's rent. The homeowners wasted no time. They tore the place down. It was a happy occasion. We were all celebrating. Said, hey, look, there goes another brick. There's that building just went. And this is the site now. The village on the green apartments are gone. So why are the fears of homeowners still here? Well, while the drug dealers and company were sent packing from the old complex, they unpacked over here, right next door. And now they want to level these apartments, the Southwest Gardens condominiums and the West Fondren apartments. They filed another lawsuit. How can you blame the landlord for what people are doing in the parking lot? Isn't that a police problem? This is a family community. It's uh, for families. And the business owner has, I believe, a responsibility to the community that he doesn't do anything that endangers uh, those families. The new lawsuit charges the management companies and the owners of the two complexes with failing to screen tenants adequately, failing to evict known troublemakers, and failing to provide adequate security. We've got to turn the alarm off. So come in and close the door and I'll go turn it off. Linda Chambers wants those apartments gone too, and she's part of the lawsuit. But get this, she lives here. She owns a condominium in one of the problem apartment complexes. If you win this lawsuit, your apartment will be torn down. But I will have won. How's that? These people who are committing these crimes and causing me to live the way I've lived the last year or so, they know that we're not going to stand for it here. Isn't it your responsibility as the management company to provide security? Absolutely not. No? No. Cindy Brooks and Bridget Lanham represent the company that manages the West Fondren Apartments. So point blank, is there a problem with drug dealers? prostitutes and other crimes here at the West Fondren Apartments? Compared to? There is no comparison. My question was, is there a problem there at the West Fondren Apartments? There is a problem with crime everywhere. It's not isolated. 
we're, we're not isolated from, from any kind of problems. We're not isolated from crime, um, drug dealing. It's, it's everywhere. And we do not promote it. We don't. This 17-year-old lives next door in the other targeted complex. Have you ever sold that? Have I ever sold that? Yeah. What? Is that, I can't hear you. Yes. You have? Got a dope case, too. You got a dope case against you right now. He says yep. he doesn't sell drugs anymore, but he admits there's drug dealing at the apartments. What do you say to those people who say they're tired of people like you, the way you used to be, selling dope around here? Man, you know, I feel like, you know, if they feel like their neighborhood ain't protected enough for them, I feel like either they need to help the laws get the drug dealer, or they need to get the hell out of here. But homeowners say they're not leaving. The criminals are no matter how many apartments have to come down. We're going to get rid of that one and the next one and the next one until we clean it up. There are some good people living in those apartments who have not done a thing wrong. If you win your lawsuit, they will no longer have homes. That's not true. You've talked to all of them and you know they have places to go. There is ample housing in the city of Houston. They're not doing anybody a favor besides themselves. And they're thinking of themselves not other people. Taish and Antonio Holt live with their infant daughter and Taish's mother, Angeline, in one of the targeted complexes, the West Fondren Apartments. They say they can't afford to move. They don't like seeing crime or hearing gunshots either. But This is my home. I consider it as my home until I can do better. You're looking at people's lives involved. It's not just about the property. It's about families. Mm -hmm. Where do they want to go? Back in the ghettos where they're trying to get out? To me, the situation is either me or my children lose our lives, or they get to keep their homes. Who gets to stay? Who has to go? And what about those honest apartment dwellers who may be caught in the middle? The homeowners say they can't afford to worry about that. They don't want to hear about haves and have-nots. They've had enough. Quite frankly, these people, I don't care if they're dead. I don't care if they get drug treatment. I don't care what happens. I want them to be away from my property, from my children, and from my home. So far, the two apartment complexes are still standing. Robin's waiting for the lawsuit to make its way through the system. And the apartment dwellers are also waiting, nervously.